Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and uh, make it so that these these two layers, logo two and logo, will blend and fade into each other. So um, the top layer is the one that we want to stay white. Okay, so what I'll do is I will call this, uh, I didn't mean to double click that, I always do that. Um, I'm gonna right click this one and I'm going to say rename and I will call this logo and then dash white and I will say intro okay so that I know that that's the intro and this one I will right click and I will rename and I will say that this one is called difference right uh, difference blend okay so that I know that that's the difference blend mode Let's just scoot that over a little bit so we can see it better. All right, and what I want to do is find the right place that I want this white one to just start disappearing. All right, so I think I want the animation probably somewhere right around here to stop, right? I want it to be completely faded out by somewhere in this, this ballpark right here. All right, and so if I put my timeline marker, uh, my playback head, right there, and then I open up this top one, um, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll find my transform options because opacity is going to be under the default set of transform options. And I'm going to turn on my keyframe marker for that one. And this is, remember, this is the white, the white layer that's on top. All right, and right now the opacity is set to 100 and that's fine. We're gonna go backwards a little bit and figure out where it needs to start its fade out. And I'm thinking that maybe somewhere in this ballpark is maybe where it should start fading a little bit so that we get the sense that uh, it's dissolving into the the difference uh, layer that's underneath it. So let's just see what happens if we add another keyframe right there on the opacity layer. <clears throat> and again, this one is set to 100. So if we take our playback head and we jump to that last one, select it, select the keyframe, and then we change the opacity down to zero. Let's just see what happens. Uh, we can collapse our transform option. Let's see what happens in the playback. Okay, let's get going. And there it does, it starts to do its blend, which is perfect, all right? All right, so we've got that all set now, right? Now the thing that we need to do at this point is we need to figure out where to stop this um, because it just keeps on going and going and going. And, and I want this kind of interesting thing to happen where right around here, it just kind of explodes, right? Um, and so we need to figure out how we can make that happen uh, so that it creates a good transition into the next. I'm going to collapse all of these effects. I want to go back over here to effect and preset because we're going to actually search for something uh, to make this work. Uh, but before we do that, let's uh, take a look at something down in the timeline where it says uh, logo. Let's, let's open this back up a little bit more. Uh, white intro and then uh, logo difference blend. Um, what I want to do is I want to shorten these clips. See how long they are? They go way beyond the work area. And so I think what I'd like to do is I'm going to double click on this logo white intro layer and I'm going to put the playback head and you'll see that it's sort of matching up down here in the timeline. I'm going to put this playback head somewhere in here just to just to get it shorter for right now and I'm going to go ahead and put uh, a limit on that and I'm going to set the out point so that it shortens it like that and then I'm going to do the same thing for logo blend I'll set the out point on that one too and so that way it keeps these shorter and I don't have to worry about them going you know all the way out here now the thing that I want to be able to find is oh, let's actually let's close this now and we can go back to our composite tab. The thing that I want to be able to find is the place where this needs to stop so that it can kind of explode and I think 
you know, somewhere, I don't know, somewhere in this ballpark, like maybe around here, I think is where I'd want the, the shatter to occur. And so if that happens right here, now, now I can easily grab the end of this and I can drag this in and have it snap. And if I hold down shift, I'll have it snap to where that playback head is. And I'll do the same thing for this one. And the reason I'm going to do this is because I'm actually going to duplicate the logo blend layer and I'm going to scoot it out here because that's the one that's going, going to explode. But instead of just having the shatter effect applied to this blend layer, I'm just going to start a brand new one. So if I select this layer, I can either do Command D, Control D on Windows or I can go to Edit and Duplicate. And this is Logo Blend 2. And what I'm going to do is, instead of having it overlap right here, uh, in fact, let's just drag this copy, let's drag it down to the bottom, just so that these other two are grouped together. And we're going to take this one and we're going to shift it on the timeline uh, so that it, and I'm going to snap it actually, so it snaps here. And you might see this and go, wait a second, I don't want that to happen again. Well, we can easily remove that. No problem. So if I select this and I twirl uh, logo blend 2 down, then I can also go ahead and take off the transformation. If I go in the transformation, I'll just get rid of the orientation by clicking the stop stopwatch. All right, and that goes away completely. And then the position I will also get rid of and it goes away completely. It just removes, completely removes the um, uh, the change to it. Oh, and the rotation is the other thing that we need to get rid of. So if I uh, twirl this back down and uh, we go where it says uh, orientation, we're going to change that back to zero. Okay. And then we also need to change where it says position, we need to change this back to zero as well for the x-axis zero uh, position. Okay, and so now we no longer have those animations on there. And what it is going to look like is the seamless change or the seamless, uh, actually it looks like there's a little bit of a blip right there. Let me zoom in and see what's happening on the timeline. Ah, that's why, it's because there's a gap. So if I have this, I'm going to hold down shift and have it snap to the end of my clips here, and then I'll take this one, I will drag it down holding down shift and have it snap also, and let's zoom back out so we can see more of the timeline, and that looks like it's going to be maybe okay to work with. Uh, let's hit the play button, and I can't tell the difference of where these clips up here like this logo and this logo, I can't tell the difference of where that stops and where that one starts. All right, so that's that's a successful, um, you know, change, transition, whatever. Um, and then the, this is the one where it's going to shatter. So I'm going to change the name of this. Um, I'm going to rename this bottom logo so that it's not called Difference Blend 2, but instead it's called Shatter. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to add an effect to it, and that effect is going to be uh, the shatter effect. And so I'm going to select uh, logo shatter, and then over here in the effects and presets panel, I'm going to do a search for the word shatter. And then here it is uh, under simulation. It uh, actually has physics with particles involved um, so that it will be able to break an object up. And so I'm going to take this effect and I'm going to drag it down to the logo shatter layer to apply it. And so now I have under effects, you'll see that I have uh, my old drop shadows, which are, that's fine. I need that to make it a consistent transition from the previous um, other layers that I had. And then here's the shadow one, or sh not shadow, shatter. Shatter. <laughs> okay, um, and so here let me collapse all of these drop shadows and glows. And then here we've got shatter that we can take a look at. Alright, and let's just see what that is going to do. 
on shatter and look what it does <laughs> it does this interesting kind of wireframe effect here in fact let's just collapse that so that it's not confusing to look at and first of all it's doing a brick effect which I don't really like um, uh, but if you look at the view right here where it says view I can instead of wireframe and forces I can choose rendered so that it gives me an idea of what the thing is going to look like and if you want to see what shapes are available you can twirl down shape and under pattern instead of bricks we are going to use glass there are all these other options too uh, that you could use but I I like glass you can explore the others as well if you'd like um, and uh, you can adjust the number of repetitions and play with these and I would like to make an adjustment I think that I'm gonna increase this uh, maybe let's see what it looks like if we go all the way up to say about somewhere around 20 okay and I think that I'm gonna see what it looks like to have more of these uh, these pieces of glass the other thing I want to do too is I want to change the extrusion depth because right now uh, they're a little bit deeper than I want them to be so I can turn that down quite a bit and make an adjustment and then they start to feel a little bit sharper uh, and less you know block like so I'm going to turn the extrusion depth down and um, the other thing too is that if I scrub this timeline a little bit we need to see like how it looks like it's breaking and I want it to look like it's kind of breaking off of this little guy that's kind of dropping through the air or flying through the air I mean he's he is dropping but the camera's moving down so it looks like he's actually flying upwards it's kind of interesting but right now it doesn't feel like these things are actually kind of coming off of him so you can um, adjust the direction if you want uh, or not the direction I'm sorry the origin um, you can adjust the direction but right now I'm adjusting the origin uh, to to you know see if I can make it look a little bit better coming off of um, coming off of this little guy let me see if I adjust it I want to adjust it up you know and see how that might look um, let's see if I can mess around with this a little bit somewhere in there and then the other thing too is I do want to actually adjust the direction I can play around with this a little bit um, let me see what happens if I adjust this and yeah, let's scrub the timeline a little bit and actually that feels more like it's coming off of both of these guys um, as the transition happens and it, it feels that feels like a, a better direction like it's being pushed outwards more um, at least it does to me um, and so we could work with that and next thing that I would need to do is I need to fade that shatter out so that those pieces kind of disappear right um, and uh, I think probably when they all sort of start disappearing naturally um, is when we would want to have them fade so somewhere we could probably have the clip end right here right we can take this and drag it so that it comes in a little bit more since it doesn't actually keep going anyway all right and then uh, what we can do is put a transition so that it fades out through an opacity change um, all right so let's twirl this down and first of all let's figure out where we want it to actually start fading I don't think that we want it to start fading until maybe I don't know maybe actually somewhere in here yeah, maybe it can actually start to fade somewhere even maybe uh, in here all right so let's go ahead and um, first things first find the transform for it so here's logo shatter I'm gonna pull up the effects because we don't need to look at those right now we'll look inside of transform and we're gonna turn on the opacity and then let's see let's scroll over or scrub over holding down shift to the end of that clip and then we will add another opacity keyframe here 
and this particular keyframe is still set to 100 um, and so we want to turn that all the way down probably to zero and see what happens and see how that looks let's hit the space bar for playback and it's going to be slow because the shatter uses a lot of physics and it it takes up a lot of the um, processor so I'm not sure how well I, I care for that one I'm going to save this real quick and if I wanted to uh, make this a little bit more efficient I could change the amount of space that I'm using for my playback and just limit it to that and let's just see if it's any more efficient yeah it's a little bit more efficient let's just keep playing that over and over and see how we like that hmm I actually think that maybe I want maybe I want this keyframe to happen sooner so I'm just going to take it and drag it a little bit to the left and let's see how that feels the shatter happening yeah and it starts to fade out sooner I think I like it better when the shatter starts to fade out a little bit sooner okay so I think I might be okay with that and now what we've got so far let's just play this oh actually let's fix our our um, work area and actually let me also collapse some things so I can see what I've got going on here a little bit better and let's just move it out all the way out to like 10 seconds and let's play with that work area play back see what we've got and then somewhere right in here is where I think I might like to have that logo slide in so that's going to be the next uh, point of business is adding another logo um, I don't think it needs to be a 3D one. We can just pull it uh, back in and um, this time it, because it's going to be on top of white, the logo needs to not be white. It needs to be black or something, right? And so we can pull that in and maybe have it slide in from the left and ease in and just stop and that can be the last thing that we see. 